Good morning. I'm happy to be here today in Newark, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, today I would like to talk about the former mayor of Newark, New Jersey, Mayor Sharp James. Mayor, mayor James served. Uh, mayor James served as mayor of Newark from 1986 to 2002. Six. 2006. Okay, and during his tenure, he made significant contributions. Uh, to the city's development and revitalization. Mayor James was born. Um, uh, Mayor James was born in uh, Florida, uh, but he migrated to Newark. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. And was deeply. He was deeply uh, committed to building a great city. Uh, he understood the struggles of the city uh, of the city's residents and was dedicated to improving their quality of life. One of the most significant accomplishments was reducing crime in Newark. He implemented uh, uh, community policing uh, strategies and worked closely with police departments to reduce crime rates and improve public safety. Mayor James was also committed to economic development and job creation in Newark, New Jersey. He implemented programs that encouraged business to invest in the city of Newark, resulting in the creation of thousands of jobs. He also focused on improving education system in Newark, recognizing that education is critical to the city's long-term success. He worked to improve the quality of public schools and increase access to higher education for Newark young people. In addition to his focus on economic development and education, Mayor James also committed to improving the city's infrastructure. He oversaw renovation and construction of several parks, uh, community centers, and public facilities. He also initiated several green uh, energy projects that reduced the city's carbon footprint and contributed to a clean environment. Mayor James uh, was a leader who was deeply committed to his community and his legacy continues to inspire others. His dedication to improving the quality of life for Newark residents serve as an example of the positive impact that can be achieved when leaders work tirelessly to serve their community. In conclusion, Mayor James also, exceptional leader who made significant contributions to the city of Newark, his commitment to reducing crime, promoting economic development, improving education, and enhancing the city's infrastructure has left a lasting impact on the community we should all serve to follow his example for work and make our community a better place. Thank you. Let me introduce you today to Mayor James. Today, we are down here in front of uh, Prudential Center. And Prudential Center, was that one of your ideas, Mayor? <laughs> That 20 years, four governors okay. did 20 years struggle to bring the Prudential Center here, to bring the Performing Arts Center here. It was a struggle. They, they said, uh, no Newark, forget Newark. We yeah. were written off the map. They wanted to go to uh, East Rutherford, the okay. Metal Sport Line, which Governor Cahill had created in 1971. Okay. And believe it or not now, Brendan, Governor Brendan Byrne, give him credit. Ken Gibson had helped him get elected. He came to Newark and said, does it matter if we develop the Meadowland and, 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 and we're not ready for Newark? And guess what? The, the administration said, it's all right. Okay. But for 20 years, I've been saying, no, no, no. How about New Jersey's largest city, the infrastructure and everything? So we kept fighting. And finally, uh, 1986, I had uh, lunch with uh, Governor Kane, okay. and he was talking about bringing an art center to New Jersey. Okay. We won that battle, opened up beautiful New Jersey Performing Arts Center to, to rave, to praise, and then I thought about, well, what about an arena? Okay, okay. Hey, so, it was your idea. Uh, why not the what largest the, city in New Jersey? Exactly, exactly. And way, when, when Cahill uh, created the, the metal land and they had First it was Brendan Byrne Arena, then okay. became the Continental Arena. That's right. I went to the games out there, but it was in the boondock. You had to park a mile that's away right, that's right, from that's the right. stadium, walk over the bridge. There you go. I had high blood pressure. 
<laughs> arthritis. <laughs> By the time you get to your seat, I say, oh, I don't want to get back to my car. Yeah. So even the teams there yeah. were dissatisfied. The, the New Jersey Nets were dissatisfied. Eventually came to Newark, they went to Brooklyn with new investors. Okay. And the hockey team, which came from Colorado to, to the uh, Brendan Byrne Arena Continental, they were unsatisfied. So I said, hey, how about Newark? Boy, I got, they start beating up on me. They right about to do it. So, all right, from the groundbreaking, from the groundbreaking to the opening of the center, a lot of people would feel that, I guess because he was out of office at the time, yeah. they right. thought that the other man had it. Was well, he was idea. up on a dam. Yeah, yeah. And so, well, we, in 204, maybe I had. Uh, a sangria wine. I said, Devils, if you come to Newark, I'll build you a $310 million arena. The city of Newark will put up $210 million. All you have to do is raise $100 million. And then the taxpayer, wait a minute, wait a minute, Trump's drunk now. He's crazy. He's going to use taxpayers' money. I said, no, no, no. What a sorry about it. Okay. They, they were giving New York more money. Right. They've been cheating. It was a billion dollars. And I took them to court. And we won, actually, 1.2 billion up. So I was going to use Port Authority to rent money okay. to fund the building of the arena. So, that, so I said, you come to Newark. We'll build an arena. You just put up 100 million. We'll put up 210 million. That's how we started the, the dialogue. The dialogue. But, but, but once it was built, now we started in 204, opened in 27. I was out as mayor in 206. I, after 20 years and to all the scars, all the war wounds, work on all the keloids, I said, I'm out. And I came to the opening of this facility that, that for 20 years I've been arguing for. They didn't introduce me. I wasn't on the dais. I was sitting in front of the about the back row, and Mick Corzine was there, of course. Booker was there. None of them mentioned Sharp Jones. At that moment, what, what was your feeling? How did you feel? That, you know, because you had given so much. No one's asked that question. That's a great question. I didn't feel bad. You know why? I didn't do it for credit. Sure, sure. I didn't do it for Sharp James. No. I did it for the people, the citizens yes. of New who I love. Yes. They took a poor boy yes. Yes. from Jacksonville, Florida, yes. made him mayor, yes. made him state senator, yes. made him a college professor, made him an athletic director. I love New I was just, I was, I just better. I bought a season ticket, must have been about $6,000, $7,000. And I would come to every hockey game. I remember, I didn't get introduced, not regular. I mean, every hockey game. And I used to bring, you know, get up some youth in the community. I said, hey, don't act up now. We out now. There'd be 18,000 people, five of us. Said, oh, don't go crazy now. Hey, we out number. But again, and, 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 I, and I apologize for being out uh, and being emotional. It was never about sharp change. It was but, but, always but you, about you, there's something deep about it as I read your book, and I just want the audience to know that he has a book out called A Sharp View. And if anyone is interested in politics, um, uh, uh, citywide, townwide, or nationwide, I think that it, that it would be a, a, a good introduction. It's almost like a politics one-on-one -on -one in this book, Sharp View. So we, you know, uh, and, and most of the books that I saw, uh, I sold them to, to, to men. And they read them. I thought they were just buying the books because they just knew me. Right, right. You know, knew Ambassador News and the things that we did. But no, they actually read the book and was asking me questions. I said, guess what, you know, and we were going back and forth. Well, so, my wife read it too, so. <laughs> and, she, and she stayed away from politics. Right, 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 right. She said, Can, and she done bought five or six of her girlfriends. Wow, wow, wow. It's the truth. I spoke to several people and I said, Charlie, this is it. when you tell the truth, yes. when you tell what really happened, people yes. can understand. Yes, yes. And, 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 and this book here made things plain, simple. It's an easy read. That's, that's the word people say? Yeah. It's an easy read, you know? It's like Even my enemy. 
<laughs> a pine. Huh? Hey, Sharp, can I buy more of it? You done tarred and feathered, trying to tar and feather for 20 years. You called me names yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. Now you want my book. Yeah, yes. But you, there again, yeah, it's it not about Sharp yes, yes, yes. And the Bible teaches yes. if you are a Christian yes. and people come up to you who've been been your enemies, they, yes. they didn't like you. Yes. That's not your word. They didn't like you. Yes. To forgive. Yes. If you agree, the Bible teaches. Yes. Hey, I embrace the Bible. Right. 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 But hey, <laughs> pay, pay the money. <laughs> pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, most most of the folks, I'll be honest with you, they didn't mind paying. I mean, when they got into the book, I'm, you know, they would ask me questions. You know, when just one time, two or three times, you know, they be asked me questions about this book. So I think that this book is a must read. And for those in Newark, I think that they should somehow put it in the curriculum in some of the uh, classes or something like that. They should do a course mm -hmm. and, 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 and invite the mayor in, ex-mayor in, so he can talk to the people. Because one of the biggest problems in our community is this right here. We don't pass the torch. But, but I'll say this here about this young man here. Uh, he never forgot where he came from. And that's rare, because most people put it in storage or in the vault and leave it and try to take off and go. So that's a, a good thing. There's been like a, a mutual love affair. Yeah. He came here, uh, well, almost barefoot, uh, holes in my sneakers and everything. Yeah. When, when they wore out, we put cardboard from, yeah, from, yeah, from yeah. the Wheaties <laughs> box top. You know, got yeah, another <laughs> two or three weeks. Yeah. Mother said, hey, hey, put some cardboard in there. <laughs> but then we wear out the sock. We have the shoes, the sneakers, and the shoes, and the, and the cardboard. Yeah. Now you need some. <laughs> what do you call it? PF Flyer. Yeah, PF Flyer. Go down, go down a series of rope yeah, up, yeah. and, and, and they used to have what they call you. Right. I don't see that word anymore. You used yeah. to go to the toilet and say, you. That's right. Right, right. Mother, hey. Yeah. But it was Bobby. all about love. You know what? I think I don't have to say. When we were poor, we thought everyone was poor. Yeah, yeah, we didn't know any rich people. Yeah, That's yeah, right. We thought everyone, everyone had an outhouse. That's right. We thought everyone had a toilet where you flush it, the water yes, comes right. out. Yeah, when you're one. poor, you're not into that yeah. into that suburbia mode of thinking. You think everyone yeah, everyone is, poor. is just like you. <laughs> right, right. right. That's exactly yeah. it. So uh, tell us some of the things about the predictive percent. Because it took me a long time to register what this was. Because I was so taken by performing arts. Yes, by, 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 by performing arts. Center. So when, when people say, did you go to the Prudential? And what I would be thinking was the Prudential, uh, 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 the, the Prudential part of the performing Before, arts. Ah, right, you understand what it means? Right, right, so right, right. That, that had me flip for a minute. Well, you know, that's interesting. When, when New Jersey, Governor Cahill, and we had to put Brendan Byrne, we had to put Florio. In fact, that we were trying to get money for the art center with Governor Florio. We took him to New York to see Tales of Hoffman. That was a great play. Okay. Uh, Sam Miller was the museum director. Sean, I got a great idea. We, you, you're saying you're having trouble getting money from the governor. Let's take Governor Florio to Broadway to see Tales of Hoffman. Okay. And, and, and Sam Miller he had his capes. And, oh, he was Devin there. <laughs> Sam, we might have lost this. The governor is sleeping. <laughs> but Florio, to his credit, he supported the art center, gave money, and became a great fan. But I'm saying, the, the, the whole thing was, that was the city arts. Sure. But we still had needed a sports arena. Sure. We needed a concert hall. Um, uh, you should come here for the McDonald's show. That's right. We have the gospel show. Yes, yes. 18,000 people in Europe for the McDonald's gospel festival. Sure. Uh, rock and roll show. I mean, the art is the art, and this is a sports venue that can accommodate big items. Sure, 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 sure. So, but in, in building this city, I mean, when you look back at it, here, in terms of pack and many other things. Do you ever sit down and say that you actually was there and you were at that put the killers in place for you? Well, I have to go and give 
not take my call up there. There was a council. Uh, I call them uh, uh, your team, the five. Right. The, 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 the magnificent five. Okay. Because people ask me all the time, say, man, James, what's the best idea you had? And say, look, please, tell what's your best idea? Anyone I could get five votes for, because I had a lot of ideas. I couldn't get the council to go along with. So you have to think about Don Bradley, our council okay. president, Gail Cheney, Gail yes, Cheney yes. Uh, Reverend Dr. Mamie Bridgewell, the late Senator Ron Rice, and, and I even met Donald Tucker. We used to fight all the time. Okay. It was about Newark. Right. We were fighting for the love of Newark. That's right. It was uh, uh, Marlon Brando uh, versus J James Dean, uh, uh, who's the better actor. Uh, it was always about Newark. So, and then the business administrator at that time, Richard Monte, then Grant. I, I had a dream team. A dream In fact, several times the, the Devers owners called me in the room and said, we're quitting, uh, uh, we're stopping the project, uh, we're going to get some people from New York. I said, oh, you're not going to New York. Sure. Go back in that room, that's the dream team. Yeah. Richard Monte, Glenn Grant, yeah. you have a dream team. Al Zach, our engineer. Dream team? Well, that's a dream team. I said, the ladies are coming from the county was a little jealous of it. Uh, Joe uh, D. Vicenzio was a little, because we had to get, some monies had to come through the county. Some could permit to sure. thing. They didn't want to cooperate. They didn't want to see Newark be successful. They didn't want Sharp Chain uh, to be successful. So there was always opposition in sure. any sure. major project. So I told the devil people, Jeff Vanderbeek and them, and his key manager, I said, oh, I, he, he adopted that word. I said, no, 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 no. Go back to that room. That's the dream team. Dream team. And, and, and this, I have to say, I think, George Sausinger, who was on that, what they call it, the New Jersey Sports Exposition Authority, okay. was against Newark. Uh, people don't want to be found dead in Newark, or they won't come to it. have a $550 million overrun. That's the headline. Yeah. It didn't happen. That's right. No cost overrun. On schedule, we predicted 207, it opened on 207. The only difference was sharp change in the back of the room not being recognized. That being recognized. <laughs> yeah. that's, the only, that's, the, that's the only overrun. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. what over? Backseat yeah, sharp yeah. change. Yeah. And, and, and all those, Cory Booker was against the art test. Hey, sharp, you should be building more uh, methadone center. You should be building more things sure. for the home. Man, you're running against me as mayor in 202, so he's against every idea I had. Right. He's up on the stage. Ooh, beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, oh, I think he may have a, a, a bad idea. Because a lot of people thought maybe, you know, kind of like it was a sad day. He came his, his idea. You know, I support him for yeah, senator. Yes, yes. I endorsed Cory Booker because I felt he was the most qualified. Yes. See, I don't get personal. I don't get personal. How do you keep it like that where so many uh, politicians, and it's almost like all over the country. It's like little, you know, people, I'm, it's not my words, but they, people are saying it, <laughs> acting like babies, you know, like little kids in candy store. You know, uh, 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 you're, you're, on, you're on critical, but people come into office with ego. People come in for the perks, sure. for the money, for the job, the time. Maybe because, and we had mentioned that, that I came out of a convention. Sure. I came out of the 1970 Black and Puerto Rican Convention in Newark yeah. that said, we need leaders who are going to represent the people. That's right. We need leaders who are not going to fight. Uh, we got to stop this divide. Yes. Because everyone, and we went into a convention. I am probably the only elected official that you will ever meet who was selected by the people and elected by the people out of that convention. Ken Gibson came out of the 1970 Black and Puerto Rican Convention here in Newark. Sharp James was elected a councilman out of the convention. When we came in office, they gave us a blueprint. Nah, we got you, we selected you, we elected you, here what you're supposed to do. Serve the people and not yourself. It's not about you, it's about us. So how do we, can a regular constituent teach the new politician or the politicians in the office that 
it's your job to serve us. It's not the other way around. How can we as voters, the common folk, mm -hmm. the one that go to the polls, that pull the lever, mm -hmm. that, that put people in office, how do we uh, communicate to those that we elect that it's not about you, it's, you you're uh, here to represent uh, us and, and, and instead of taking on a different... And, and, and that's, that's a critical, critical, important question. Don't put them in and then stay home. Don't put them in and don't go to counseling. Okay. Do not put them in and say, well, we expect them to do good. Yeah. You have to be vigilant, Elisa Parker and more. An Eloise and everything. <laughs> go to every council meeting and bring up the issue and, and, and demand that you be accountable. Yeah. Accountability. We put you in office, we will take you out of office. No, don't have automatic vote. Oh, I know what you're not. Wait, no, I know what you're No, you know what the weakness is now? What's that? The word team. Team. You don't vote for individual. You vote, you vote for, for a team. team. And then once the team get in, the team have to always be yes, 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 yes. Okay. I think that's the worst thing that came up with. Now we're getting this where someone said, I put this team together sure. uh, uh, versus this team. And once the team get in, they're obligated to do my business. No, we should be looking at the individual candidate, their platform, what they stand for, and hold them accountable. Well, that way really is what I'm saying. I, I only hope that, that we do show up at those council meetings. Now that COVID is oh. over, and we need to raise Thank as you. much cane as we have. Oh, come on. Come on. In the suburbs, they do that. They do that. You know, it's like... Going away from being the politician, <laughs> the ice skater, the tennis player, where, where the former guy said, I have a love affair with, with, with Governor Tom Kane. Who was as a job? I can't pick no. I'm governor of all the city, but I'll hire Carl Shaver to do a study. Sure. And then he came back and said, Have you made a decision? All roads lead to the New York. <laughs> I said, I oh, told yeah, you that yeah, free, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. in the back That's of the room. I'm in the back yeah. of the room again. It's like they keep putting yeah. me in the back of the room. I said, hey, I told you that six months ago yeah. free. You just paid him four hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. You know that all I, roads he need to the new York, right? Yeah. And then by the and in the hockey, I put on the skates I had, you know, my, I had my skates on. Uh, they didn't know that uh when the uh, arena opened up in Brantford Park in the 50s. Yes. Sharp James was a skating wow, wow. Sharp James played ice hockey. So now the devil's all thinking about it. It's not a great place. That our kids been skating in the high school. Yes, yes. I talked to William Miles at Century. He's so proud of Century. He had me call a couple of players and so forth. Maybe they lost all their games in the first year, but yeah. they began to improve yeah. and learn. You have to learn. Exposure. Exposures. Is Newark good. had ice skating team long before the Devils yes. came to Newark. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 we had a, you know, on Howard Street there at the JFK was a uh, that, ice the skating. Ice skating. Yes. Yes. You yes. went yeah. in, left was to the uh, swimming pool, pool and right with, was, the, with the retractable roof. That's I right, the retractable roof. didn't think right. Newark had that. That's right. And then you go to the right with a rink, the, and then it became a weight room. You had to wait. And a gym. Central. And east side. East side east had side, the best yeah, hockey right. team. In Newark. Yes, 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 yes. I had a friend that actually, I'm going to mention his name too, that played for Century, then he went to Eastside. Because oh, he, he, oh, really? uh, yeah, he went to Eastside. It was all about hockey. His name was Crawford Whiting. Whiting. Uh -huh. And he became a police officer in Irving. Uh -huh. I think he's probably retired now. But he was a good ice skater. We had several. And, and he skated with these. Oh, these come are on. Hockey and skates. When we say African American, there's Subban. Uh, P.K. Subban, yeah. 13 years in the league, yeah. and playing with Montreal Canadiens, and he played with the Devils. I went out, my season tickets, I'm watching. But let's not forget Willie Owen, the first African American to play soccer, 1958, got hit in the eye with a puck, and played the rest of his career with, with only one eye. Wow. Willie O'Reilly. I think O. o Oh, Aria, oh, Willie O'Reilly. Can't forget him. He was a Jackie Robinson of the Hockey League. Oh, we shouldn't forget him already. Come on now. Yes. 1958. 
Baseball, Jackie Robinson, 1947. Yeah. Hockey, 1958 with Ray. I mean, and then Subban there was a great defensive player. He would jump out there. <laughs> Pete, Pete, uh, 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 first two names so long. <laughs> There's a real call, P.K. Subban. <laughs> they forgot the first two long names. <laughs> See, there was many obstacles. Uh, I've seen a picture with you guys actually I did the ground oh, yes. uh, of this place. And, and when you when you ride around real and you know that you were part of that well you were part of the, uh, the moral fabric that rebuilt you society society of you no no you can't just say society or how have to say award winners that right? Harvard University yes. gave it the Dibley Award yes. as the best urban housing stock in America. That changed the whole face of it because that was right there in the heart. As you come up Springfield oh. or South Long Javel, that was a very desolate People place. People lined up for one week to yeah. buy this idea. Now I'm looking at this uh, 13, 14, 15 yeah. acres of acre. Well, I don't know what to do. I'm mad. I got to hit the ground run. So I said, well, I just drove through the suburb and they have a uh, Hobnanian housing, K Hobnanian housing. Sure, sure, sure. The, the lawns look like the golf course, they're beautiful home. So I called him in Redback, New Jersey. I said, uh, Mr. Hobnanian? Yes. Uh, this is Sharp James Mayor of Newark. Yes. Would you come to Newark and meet with him? Come to Newark and meet with him? And I saw him up and had his lawn side would hang up. I'll be more than happy to. So I brought him to Newark. Sure. Stood at that site. I said, Man, Jane, I'm in business to make money. I build beautiful houses in the suburbs. Now you asking me to build houses where people scared to walk. Yeah, you and I are scared to stand here. And she said, What? And I said, Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. And he said, Wait a minute, I'll try. K Hop Nanian. Yes, yes. K Boar. Go for K E B O R. I've seen it construction. So then, he, so then now they're in Newark. I'll try. He comes to my office and says, Man, James, you got one problem. What's that problem? $13 million cleanup is needed. The, the land is contaminated. Newark needs to give us $13 million to start the project. Oh, oh, oh. $13 million. <laughs> Hey, no taxes already, highly confiscatory, 13 million. So hold on, give me two weeks. I get on the phone and call Sal Fenster at NJIT. Yes. Newark College of Engineering, yes. NJIT, Newark Institute of Technology, where my brother graduated. Right, right. And the president of Sal Fenster, Mr. Fenster, this is Mayor Jane. Could I ask me with you? Yes, sir. Well, what's the problem? I said, they say it takes 13 million dollars. Can you send some engineers over here and help? I sent six engineers. Two weeks later, they came back to my office and said, We've solved the problem. I said, You solved the problem? The 13 million? They said, No, no, no. We discovered there were oil tanks in the, in, in the homes of those grounds. Sure. If you give us the block and lock number of every homeowner that had a house over here, we'll go and pluck. Pluck them out, put sand in them. This is what they have to do when you have your oil tank. You put sand in them, cut them, put sand, or pluck them out of the ground, and we'll clean that site. So I go, how much was that cost? Four hundred forty-seven dollars. Oh, yes. Whoa, 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 whoa! Thirteen million to four hundred. For when can you start? Yeah, come on. <laughs> so right now, <laughs> now you go over there today. So they opened in 1997. Yes. They look as beautiful today, yeah, yeah. and all the college students trying to buy them up yes. and they live yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, and, and by the way, and, and, and this is a side story, the family invited me to his family. And they said it, and I read it in the obituary. It said, K. Hopney loves people. And I was one saying, you know what? You are know that more than you know. We took him to a rat-infested block. People scared the walk. Yes, I remember and, the area. And he built Society Hill at what we call it, University, whatever you call it. But that's a 
that there's a nigga that was a, a, could a call great, her yes, name milestone. successful in the yeah. suburb, came to Newark sure. and proved people lined up for seven days in the rain yeah. to buy into Newark society. Yeah. Yeah. So you are the man that really wore Newark on your sleeves. In between jumping out being a devil, jumping out with my territory. Oh, now, Governor Kane in the art center. He was a great tennis player. Governor, Governor, let's play tennis. By the way, how about being art center? Governor, let's play tennis. And remember now. See, now, remember, 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 remember. Governor Kane, I am the governor yes. of all cities. I can't pick and choose. Sure, sure. We need a study. I respect it. Yeah. Governor Kane. What, perhaps one of the best governors I've ever had. Sure. Family came over with the Mayflower. Uh, uh, they have everything you want. But he was a down to earth individual. Yes. Yeah. And and just to you know, well well, this right here, guys, I'm so happy to do this interview because now people really know what it takes to be a bear. That here we have our bear there playing tennis with the governor. And hey, he's a good oh, two governors. Brendan Byrne, okay. Tom Kane were good tennis players, and and they and we would talk yeah. over playing tennis. Sure. Tennis is a game called love. Oh, yeah. six zero, yeah. you yeah. yeah. lose. <laughs> six zero, you lose it now, but yeah. it's called love. But Governor Brendan Byrne is a good tennis player and a good governor yeah. and a people person. Governor Tom Kane was a good tennis player, a people person, and a good governor. Yeah. 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 Think what we say. They were people first. They were good yeah. governors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't about Democrats and Republicans. It was about what's good, what's best for the people. Right. What's for the state, yeah. Come so, on, yeah. Governor Kane, Brendan, about the people. Serve the people, not and, yourself. And let me say this right here, Sean. You definitely, you know, was a good mayor for, for the city of North Carolina. <laughs> you were out there champion. I mean, just to think of a mayor hitting a ball, and holler. Yeah, and, and Dave Dinkins in the eye now. He was the biggest press I got. <laughs> uh, Dave Dinkins was a great tennis player. He played tennis all the time. And we played in New York, yeah. celebrity tournament. And I hit the ball and hit him in his eye. For three months, Yeah, black eye. I tell him that's why he got elected, because I hit him in his eye. People felt, I sorry, said, they, they felt sorry for him. <laughs> Dave, Dave, you owe me one. <laughs> but just to think that, that's why I say that this book here, A Shock View, is a good start for anyone that's interested in politics. Because you learn really the inside and the outside of what politics is about. Here we have our mayor playing tennis with Brendan Byrne, playing tennis with uh, Tom Kane. And at, at each strike that he hit the ball, he's hollering to lobby for our city. For the, for the art center, for the, uh, uh, the devil center here, a uh, potential center. Let's just add one thing. While Brendan Byrne, Dave Dinkins, and Tom Campbell, and Arthur Ashe came to the oh, yes, yes, and I said, Sean, yeah. could we start a national tennis program to take our youth off the street? Yes. Out, out of a life of violence. Yes. Take the glass off the tennis court, the debris off the and we will give them scholarships and we'll send them to school and car or have the lifetime sport of them. Arthur Ashe and Nick Boateri came to Newark and created a national program that was so successful it went international. He said, four, he, I think in his letter to me, and you have a copy of that, 4,700 youth learned to play tennis. None of them were involved in crime. All of them yes, finished yes, school. Yes, I mean, it was unreal. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, someone showed love to them. Yes. Someone showed help to them. Yes. The mentoring program. Yes. yes. I mean, it's, it's like the other big program was Ray Chambers, the Chambers Ready yeah, Scholars yeah. program. He walked into my office. Uh, Mayor Van, uh, have you heard of the program in New York, Eugene Lang, where he walked into a classroom and said, everyone in his classroom, can go to college if you maintain a C grade, and I'll pay for it. Eugene Lane in New York. So I said, well, he said, I would like to take that program. He said, like, you really know how to go a little better. Every seventh grade student in New York 
who maintains a C grade, we will send them to the College or University of Detroit. We will give them a mentoring program and we will help assist them in getting a job. I want pick me up, get me off the floor. Are you serious? Gray Chamber, the love of Newark, a graduate of Newark West Side High School, now coming back and created the Newark Ready Scholars Program. Every seventh grader can go to college. Every this maintain a secret. This man was about love. That, that's a all, that, that, that is love. Come on, a philosophy. Yeah. Great Chambers, the Boys Club, he saved. Great Chambers, the West Side Park Restoration. Yeah. Great, uh, Great Chambers, the Prudential Center. Great Chambers, the Art Center. Definitely Art Center. How deep is the ocean is how much love we owe to this giant of a man, giant of an angel yes. from heaven, yes. Great Chambers. Yes, and we, you know, as we come to the conclusion of this uh, interview, we have to also remember that they came to the city and to help, but they seen help in the making. They help because they seen help in the making. They seen Sean James with no point of sleep. As they said, many people said at your book signing that you talked about Newark and Newark. <laughs> <laughs> the cheerleader. The cheerleader. The, the, yeah. I looked down and see if I had a skirt on sometimes. <laughs> cheerleader. <laughs> well, we have male cheerleaders too. So, again, I want to thank you, uh, Shop James, for this uh, interview. Thank and, those members of the council. And the members and your thank team. Thank the Red yes. Chamber. Yes. Thank the Art Ryan. Yes. Thank the Arthur Ashe. Yes. Thank the Cabor. Thank Governor Kane. Jeff Vanderbeek, yes. who had faith to come to Newark. Come on. Because during those times, yeah. yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. People, you know, today don't remember those times. But those was the times when people really didn't want to come into because it wasn't really nothing to hear see. If I told you I'm in time, the people say they're going to tar and feather me yes. for building a farming for building in. I didn't know whether I would look good in tar and feather. Yes, right. yes, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> and we weren't going to let them do that because you're truly a champion for the city. And that's what it takes, you know. It, you know I remember when Barack Obama was running and, and a lot of the politicians that was already established called it that he was a community leader. They say he's a community leader, this, and they said it in the negative. But, you know, a country is a country, the state, you have a state, you have a county, and you have communities. So that's what it takes you. You have to be a community leader to be able to be a positive if you get elected to office. And by the time you got elected to office, you became the government president. You, on the other hand, the, the most powerful word in the dictionary is the weak, the weak word I. It was never about sharp things. It was about creating a team of team individuals yeah. who, who believe in making Newark, as Gail Chainfield will always say, a destination city. Okay. Again, this is Zachariah Jackson. Thank you. That's the news. Goodbye. I thought the girl was supposed to do something, hold up.